trying to get here. Oh, she wants to push back. That, yeah, me was, too. that was exactly well, what When I came in at 20, it was. Well, it looked like it was coming east and uh, going north. So the backsplash came out really well. Have you met the neighbors that I moved in across the street? I've t I've talked to them, but they're very quiet. Yeah. They're they're nice when I talk it's to good them. Good for but, neighbors. But they're they don't really they don't really engage with their neighbors. They probably so, have you know, about, so when I see them in the in the in the part in their driveway, I'll have a conversation with them. Better than like obnoxious neighbors. All right, you don't. All right, that's fine. All right, I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Going live. Are you ready? Use the story first, please. One more minute. Ready, Nancy? Okay, the um, regular 7 p.m. work session of the Wyckoff Township Committee for Tuesday, July 12th is now in session. Nancy? Roll call, Mr. Madigan? I uh, here. Mr. Melchione? Here. Ms. Rubenstein? Here. Mr. Shanley? Here. And Mayor Boonstra? Here. This regular work session meeting of the Wyckoff Township Committee is now in session. In accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting appears on our annual schedule of meetings. A copy of said annual schedule has been posted on the bulletin board in Memorial Town Hall. A copy has been filed with the municipal clerk and has been posted on our municipal website. A copy has also been emailed to The Record, The Ridgewood News, and The North Jersey Herald News, all newspapers having a general circulation throughout the Township of Wyckoff. At least 48 hours prior to this meeting, the agenda thereof was similarly posted filed and emailed to said newspapers. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, we have the pleasure tonight uh, um, is Rampo High School baseball team. You all here? <laughs> <laughs> Should we wait a few minutes? Is, that, is anyone else, uh, is anyone else coming along? A lot, a lot of guys are either away or bike play or something like that. So okay. So we're ready to go? Ready to roll. Okay. All right. Um, we have a proclamation from the Township Committee, and I'm going to read it for, for you for your championship season, which I am going to read to you, uh, I'm going to read into the record now, actually, and then we'll have you come up and we'll take some photos and make some presentations uh, and all the rest of it. So, um, so let me read the proclamation now. We'll start there. Whereas the 2022 Ramapo High Varsity Baseball team is the 2022 New Jersey North 1 Group 3 state sectional champion by virtue of having defeated Montville High School on Friday, June 10th, 2022 at Ramapo High School, an exciting 3-2 final. And whereas this exceptional team completed their season with an overall record of 19 wins, 15 losses, in addition to their 3-2 victory over Montville. The team also defeated Parsippany Hills High School 4-2 on June 1st, Wayne Valley High School 13-3, on June 4th, good hitting, and Bergenfield High School 6-3 on June 7th and the three state sectional playoff games leading up to the final. And whereas this team's accomplishment of winning the 2022 North 1 Group 3 state sectional title is the first time since 2005 that a Rampo baseball team has achieved this lofty goal. And whereas this outstanding team's hard work and dedication combined with its great skill led to being named the number seven ranked team in North Jersey by the Bergen Record and number six ranked team in Group 3 in the state of New Jersey by the Star Ledger. And whereas the Rampo High School baseball team benefited greatly from the dedication, commitment, and leadership of coaches Mike Esposito, Garrison Ward, and assistant coach uh, Chris Ligori, all of which st started their baseball playing careers in the Township of White Oaks rec program. Whereas special thanks is extended to the parents, coaches, friends, and the Rampo students, teachers, and administration for their never-ending commitment and support. And whereas, the special group of student athletes, freshman Charlie Wingfield, sophomores Payne Teal, Charlie Lenders, 
Aiden Hayward, Kyle Pervin, and Brendan McHugh, Juniors, Jake Lopez, Tommy Sika, Will Curran, Cooper Pagioli, and Matt Bedrin, and Seniors, Lucas Straminski, Dante Maurice, Christian Cavignaro, Nico Logatetis, Jared Herman, Jack Klein, and Nick Valetti, Connor Saslo, Joey Bono, Michael Woolley, Luis Ruiz, Matt Faes, JT Casagoranes, and Andrew Kozelvikar. Wow, you're losing the whole team. Jeez, I guess you won't, I hope you're back next year. Um, have achieved extraordinary awards and honors by virtue of their commitment to unselfish team play, tireless work ethic, outstanding baseball skills, and their overall commitment to the game of baseball. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Township of White Buff, County of Bergen State, New Jersey, that the Rampo High School bar boys varsity baseball team, including coaching staff Mike Esposito, Garrison Ward, Chris Ligori, are hereby extending congratulations on behalf of our entire community for the significant success they have achieved and our thanks for serving as positive role models for the young athletes of our community and for illustrating the rewards which can be achieved through commitment and diligence in pursuing excellence. Thanks, guys. Okay, uh, why don't you come up and we will give you your proclamations. Suitable for framing. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Good job. Thank Congratulations. Good job. Don't be shy. Thank you. Congratulations. Good job. So I can't out the diploma. Congratulations. Good job. Thank you. Proclamation and a handshake. Congratulations. Good job. Thank you. One more. Congratulations. Good job. Thank you. Congratulations. Great job. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, thank you. Congratulations, thanks very much. Congratulations, thanks very much, guys. Thanks for keeping a great game of baseball going here. Appreciate it, thank you. Any coaches here? Right here. Right there. Yeah, right here. Oh, what about the guy with the hat? Nope. Okay. Super fan. Okay. Thank you. I'm hoping my freshman right. can make this team. He's still playing through 14. So. Oh, nice. All right. His game got rained out tonight against Northern Highlands. Usually he plays tomorrow. Cool. The good thing is it switched from Allendale to here tomorrow. All right, Tom right. Manning, you want to set us up here for a picture? Right. Where are the coaches? coaches? These are the coaches right here. I know, they look young. They look like you players. Actually, you do. Yeah, they really do. You want the kids in there. Coaches like that. Coaches are good. Coaches are good. Where am I going? You're right there. You're good. You're probably good, right? Get closer, boys. Okay. 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 Oh, wow. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about his job at the next time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good job. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, I'll say something. Okay, I'll say something. All right, guys, heads up here. Heads up, heads up. Is there a microphone? I'll just talk real quick. Oh, we're on, right? All right. All right. Um, just a quick 
quick thank you. I want to thank everybody. Uh, hold on, wait till you sit down. All right, I just want to thank everyone, especially the Township Committee, for honoring us. Um, it was a great season. Um, really, really cool that, and you mentioned it when you were speaking before, that um, you know, all three of our coaches uh, grew up here in Wyckoff. Um, you know, we came through the rec system um, as the rec director is here today. Uh, probably not for long with his late arrival, but <laughs> 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 no, but, uh, but no, I, uh, honestly, I wanted to thank you because, you know, this is a great town to grow up in. Um, it's, it's really uh, cool of you guys to uh, think of us and honor us here. Um, and, you know, for, like I said, for the three coaches that grew up in Wyckoff, this is something that's really special to us to come back, coach, and help out and, uh, you know, help these kids, um, you know, that not only develop on the field, but off the field into great young men. So appreciate it. I'm also now a resident of Wyckoff, so just like to keep it in the town. So thank, thank everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, hopefully see you next year. I just want to make note, I, I see Andy Wingfield is here, as Coach mentioned. I want to thank you for your help with this, Andy. Thanks very yeah, much. Thank you, Andy. Thanks very much. We was then it's that picture. Whoever took the picture, send us Okay, it, everything is signed. Everything Nancy, is signed. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tim. Um, pu public comment uh, time. I will take a motion to open the minute, a meeting for a 10 minute public comment period. Two minutes per speaker for comment on any governmental issue that a member of the public feels may be of concern to the residents of Wyckoff. So moved. Second. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mr. Melchione? Yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Shanley? Yes. And Mayor Bunchto? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Please step forward to the microphone or give me one minute. Sure. If you are not here, you can call in 201. 891-7000, extension 2220, if you wish to make a comment. Now, Mayor, the floor is yours. State your name and address, please. Uh, sure. Marcella Vanderims, 464 Lafayette Ave. Um, after Ms. Rubenstein posted on uh, Facebook today that the meeting was tonight and there's been discussion about the deer, um, I spoke to the animal control officer for Wyckoff, I guess it was September of last year, and she was super helpful. She gave me a lot of information um, and this has been on my list to come here and talk, uh, and now even more so. Uh, I donated blood at the blood drive that was held for Coach Gibbs at Ramapo in February, and I got a letter back from the blood bank that said they had to dump my blood down the drain. They couldn't use it. Um, I now have three tick-borne diseases that I'm dealing with, uh, that my life is not, like, horribly affected. I've seen other people I've talked to whose life is much more affected by it. I don't know when I was bitten by a tick. I've never seen one on me, but most likely the source is my backyard where the deer hang out in, I don't know, sometimes nine groups of 12, 15. Uh, they're there in the winter, they're there in the summer, they're always there. So I don't know what we can do. They, you know, yes, they eat my plants and it's annoying, but for me, the biggest concern is the, the health, that issue that we're facing with tick-borne diseases not just in New Jersey, you know, it's all over the country, but like we have to start somewhere. I don't know, you know, bow hunting, I know is one of the options, sterilization is expensive, but somewhere along the way, like as a county, as an area, we have to do something. Um, the numbers of people with Lyme disease, Babesia, Bartonella, Rocky Mountain, spotted fever, um, a tick carries up to 14 diseases that you can get some people end up in wheelchairs because their systems are so attacked by it. I'm thankfully, praise Jesus, not in that position. Um, but as a town, like, I would love for us to do something to protect our residents from 
these illnesses. Um, your everyday doctor doesn't really know much about it. I've been seeing a functional medicine doctor. Um, I've done all the testing for it uh, that insurance doesn't cover in the state of New Jersey. So I don't know what the answer is, but we need to do something. We need to move forward into some kind of solution that reduces the deer population here um, and protects us from the ticks that they carry. I did, uh, in my conversation with the animal control officer in September, she did tell me that when you see a mom with more than one baby, you know they're overfed. Um, it's not normal for a female deer to have two or three fawns at once. It's normal for them to have one like every other year. And at the rate that we're populating white off with deer, um, yeah, I think we're gonna be seeing a lot more of the tick-borne diseases, so. That's Thank it. you for your comments. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> I just finished a round of um, antibiotic for a tick bite. Yeah. I, I, I raised my hands to comb my hair, what I have left of it, and I noticed a bullseye right here on my inside, the inside of my left uh, forearm. So I went to the doctor, and he tested me and said, well, let's be on the safe side. So I got the 10-day yeah. the um, protocol. Yeah, I've been on so. antibiotics. I'm on round one of 30 days, and yeah. I will have to do another 30 after that. The yeah. Babesia is a parasite, so I'm yeah. on anti-parasite yeah. medication too. So it's just a lot of stuff that I would love not to have to take, but I do <clears throat> have to at this point. Yeah. So it's just, and I had no idea these things existed until it affected me personally. Right. You know, everybody knows about Lyme, but nobody knows about the 13 other things that you can get from yeah. a tick yeah. that can be lifelong. So. Okay. Right. Thank you for Thank your you. comments. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Janet Toomey, 501 Aspen Lane in Wyckoff. And um, I want to uh, commend you for bringing up that issue on health and Lyme disease and all the other diseases about ticks. I was a pediatric nurse practitioner and um, I am telling you, it's a terrible, terrible thing. And most people do not pick it up. So they do not pick it up as an illness until way later, is what I'm trying to say. You're lucky if you get that round um, spiraling fatigue. Yeah. yeah. So I'm so glad she came up and had the courage to tell you she has a big problem, a huge problem. <laughs> And uh, I give her a lot of credit for letting us all know about that. Um, I also uh, wanted to uh, bring up the issue of safety in um, a Spring Meadow um, Drive. Um, I know the light isn't fixed yet, and I know Matt has been in touch with Rockland Electric and will be again, I'm sure. Um, and uh, it is missing that uh, that lane, that, that entire uh, drive, is missing two more lights. They're not out, they're not there. Uh, and it is where the, um, the traffic comes out of the Y and onto that road. It was supposed to be there, it was missing. Well, no, I have to say that I thought that uh, that place that there was a missing light, um, that is a cave-in which I found out about when I went back and, and looked at it again, and I asked a few people around, and they said it was a cave in there. And so that wasn't a light, it wasn't a missing light. But um, there is only one light in that long lane uh, from, from my house, which is Aspen Lane, uh, and the broken light. And then uh, there should be at least two more lights, if not three, on that stretch. So I know you were going to, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> notify the police if they would go there and look. And uh, the exit, one of the exits for the Y is right there on, on a road that has just one broken light. So, um, and now that the kids are around and hang out in the field uh, sometimes late in the evening, there becomes a, another issue, not only a drive issue, but, um, you know, kids walking up and not paying attention, and the light is minimal. So thank you very much for looking into that again. That's, we appreciate that. We also appreciate your kindness in 
um, sending the people to uh, look at the back of our of the property, uh, which is on the right side of the um, <laughs> the field and the parking lot, um, and um, they're trying. I understand that. I can see they're trying. Certainly, it's much cleaner, and that's wonderful. And since I complained or told you about that um, before, it has almost always been clean, and that's wonderful. And so is the parking lot, and the kids are there for the uh, summer. Uh, but uh, I know they're trying to, uh, to get rid of some of the weeds. I think we have to take this year as a, a warning that it has to start early <laughs> in the spring next year because I don't think you'll ever be able to, um, to complete what you and I would love to see completed. So um, uh, your, your friend who uh, does the why now, <laughs> but um, perhaps he can be more of a help, and um, I don't know if the other areas in other parks have our problem, but um, I'm, I, I see that you're trying, and everybody sees that you're trying, so that's wonderful, and thank you for listening. And um, also, um, Elsa, my uh, friend who lives in Spring Meadow, also mentioned to me, could there be a crosswalk across Spring Meadow Drive? Um, we only have um, uh, sidewalks on one side, and sometimes only half the side is, is sidewalk. The Y side is not. And if people want to cross over and maybe walk out of Spring Meadow, especially in the morning and um, 8 to 9 and 3 to 4, uh, you really can't if you're trying to walk. Uh, there isn't a way you can get over safely. The, the cars actually are stopped in Spring Meadow Drive, totally stopped. Um, in, in the morning, if there is a policeman, and thank you for the policeman who is there most of the time, but not every day, um, totally stopped. And you cannot get out at all because it's so dangerous. Cars come down from Ramsey like there is no tomorrow. <laughs> on um, Wyckoff Avenue. And, uh, and there's no hope. My husband goes to Mass in the morning. There's no hope of turning left. You, you have to go right and then around to get into the church there because um, you'll be hit unless you, you no, no, no lefts can be made. So that is a problem unless the policeman is there. And then it's very helpful. Um, I also spoke to the um, traffic manager at 3 o'clock, who is the son of the lady who runs the Y. Very nice gentleman. And I see how they're trying to um, handle the traffic um, in the afternoon. And everybody has to go down into the, um, drive, uh, into the parking lot all the way around, and then they will flag them out. Uh, including everybody that lives in Spring Meadow. And that's no problem. Um, sh you know, we all have to understand there's a, a traffic pattern that has to be um, taken care of. Um, so um, he was very nice, um, very hard to get in and out in those hours, but they are doing their best, and we know that. And uh, there is no policeman uh, usually in, in uh, between 4 and 5, however. So... <laughs> It, it, but going out the other way, there sometimes is a policeman going out the um, other way. All right, so um, that uh, is information I'm trying to uh, tell our people about just to try to avoid those hours, too. Um, and uh, let me think what else. Um, no, that, that's it. I'm glad to see you back, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad Thank you're you for here. Your card from you're the very, residence. very that was welcome. Really, really sweet. You're appreciated. Thank you all. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else wish to comment by phone? Seeing and hearing no one, I move to close public comment. Second. Mr. Madigan? Yes. Mr. Melchione? <laughs> yes. Ms. Rubenstein? Yes. Mr. Shanley? Yes. And Mayor Boonstra? Yes. With an affirmative vote, the motion is approved. 
Matt, is there anything on the 8 p.m. agenda that you wish to highlight? Or go over? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, under the consent agenda, um, I'll start at two, uh, Resolution 220. Uh, is the first is the award of the 2022 road resurfacing contract. Uh, we did receive bids uh, last week. Uh, bids were received from eight different vendors. Uh, I should say two weeks ago we received bids. Uh, eight different vendors, and um, the lowest responsive and responsible bidder is DNL Paving. They're, they've done work for the township for several years. Um, bid came in at. Second, uh, $1,173,318.50. Uh, as the committee knows, we uh, budgeted for that this year. Uh, so there's a resolution authorizing the award of contract. And if it is passed tonight, our pre construction meeting for that project will be tomorrow morning uh, with the vendor. Uh, they want to get in here um, and start paving uh, ASAP to be done before the it, it, it be done in the beginning of August before they have to move on to uh, school-related projects that need to be done before schools open. Um, that being said, uh, it is our recommendation, both mine and the superintendent of public work, or the manager of public works, uh, that we award the road resurfacing contract. Um, then skipping down to Resolution 222, uh, last year the legislature uh, passed a law requiring that the municipality within two years of the effective date of a law that becomes effective next Friday, um, inspect all rental homes, uh, one single family, two family, and multifamily rental uh, dwellings uh, that were built prior to 1978 uh, for lead-based paint. Uh, the township does not have a lead-based paint certified, an inspector that can uh, inspect for lead-based paint. So we are required. So we are. I'm recommending that we go out and uh, solicit proposals. There's a list of about there's about four pages where the certified vendors in New Jersey that can do the work, um, and the law requires that on top of the fee that's put on the homeowner or the property owner for the work, uh, they have to add a twenty dollar fee that gets collected and remitted to the state for um, a remediation fund. Uh, so at the next meeting, we'll have proposals back hopefully. At that point, we'll also have to pass an ordinance setting a fee for this specific service. Um, we're in the process now, my, the clerk, myself, our uh, zoning officer, going through and finding out how just how many properties we actually have. It's very little. It actually will probably be underneath the bid threshold, um, yeah. but we do, you know. These are rental properties only? Rental properties only. Yeah. Um, but these are rental 78. properties. 78. So Obviously, we've spoken about this, and I kind of want to go on the record as saying that this is a huge unfunded mandate from the state. I mean, massive. Mm -hmm. Not only to the owners of these properties, which remediating lead paint completely from a house is an oh, unbelievable undertaking, but also to the town to inspect all of these properties. There are very few lead paint inspectors they are extremely costly, um, and there is no funding from the state to do this. So this is something that's going to be obviously passed on to our taxpayers. So just wanted to go on the record that this is this is really a burden on the town, and the state has done nothing to ease that burden. Mm -hmm. Would you walk the list of the, of the homes that are registered as renters in the town? So the ones that are registered as renters, and then we're going to have to do a little bit of research just to make, you know, a... Uh, I'll give you an example. Properties that the uh, tax bill might not go to the property. Reach out to them and confirm that they're not a that the property is not a rental property. Well, and that's the other problem with this we is don't, that there's no not only is it putting this burden on the homeowners who rent their properties, but it's also encouraging people to not report rentals to the town because they're going to be subject to this enormous financial burden now. Correct. So. Um, the, while I completely agree with you that it's an, it would be considered, we can call it an unfunded mandate. In the eyes of the state, it's not an unfunded mandate because uh, they're requiring the property um, owner to pay a user fee, to pay a fee for it, and it's not included in the taxes. If they 
required that the municipality pay for it out of the property taxes, then it would be an unfunded mandate. But who's going to enforce it? That's the issue. How do you possibly enforce a homeowner to spend several thousand, a hundred thousand dollars to remediate their property? The enforcement is all on the town. That's Correct. the unfunded and, mandate. And in, all, in, in order to get the towns to move on this, the legislature also put a thousand dollar fine right. on the municipality per property for not doing such inspection. But what happens when we inspect and then a homeowner says, no, I'm not remediating. I don't have $100,000 to remediate my property. Then it's on the town to enforce, and there is no mechanism for enforcement whatsoever in this law. Correct. It's very, very vague. <clears throat> uh, there's another, the, the, there's a whole litany of questions. I was actually on the phone today with the administrators in Franklin Lakes and Oakland on this. You know, we're lucky in, in our area, we don't have many of these rental properties that were built prior to 78. And the ones that were built prior to 78 are a lot older than 78. But we have entire streets of them. Whether they've been reported to the town, not reported to the town, we have a significant amount. Mm -hmm. But not as rental properties. I'm sorry? They're not as rental but not properties. as rental properties. It's only rental property. Owner occupied doesn't fall under this. No, but we have a significant amount of rental properties in town. They're just not typically reported, reported. to the town. People don't tend to get a CO. They are reported. required, but not everybody gets a CO. Mm -hmm. But so now it's the town's responsibility to go out and see who hasn't gotten a CO. This is the first of what I would consider many legis acts from the legislature with regard to lead that are going. Well, I shouldn't say the first. This is probably the second or third with regard to lead that, have, that has come down recently and will be coming down in the very near future. I believe you will see, once summer session is over, you will see two or three additional bills that are currently either in, reported out of committee or in committee currently having to do with lead, whether it be in lead-based paint, lead in the water. Right. And, the, and, health, and the health and, aspects are real. And resale of properties. The health yeah. aspects are real, but the mechanics are falling on the town mm -hmm. when we don't have the resources or the professionals to do these inspections or enforce the state law. Right. It's not really the role of your munici mun uh, municipality mm -hmm. to enforce the state's laws. <clears throat> and I, I feel even worse for the municipalities that don't have a local building department that use the BCA, because what it did is it put the requirement on those municipalities to to go out and hire an inspector to do the inspections and the, formulate and do it themselves. The lead paint inspection is so specific. Mm -hmm. And usually when I do it, it's you do one room, you do two. I, yeah. I don't understand by re I've read the law how you can possibly have an inspector inspect an entire house and then have a homeowner remediate the entire house and the entire exterior. You may be talking about tearing down walls to studs. I mean, this is this is not just about painting over it anymore. This is huge cost. All right, we need to move along here, though. Okay. So we, it's going to be a my problem. <laughs> um, anything else, Matt? Uh, under part two, under the consent agenda, is an ordinance uh, that was requested by uh, committee uh, to uh, regulate the littering of uh, newspapers that are thrown all over the place. Um, this ordinance actually mimics the one on the books in Oakland. Um, and then there are two, re two motions, um, one authorizing the fireworks um, and the waiving of all municipal fees, and then two approving the Christian Health uh, request for a six by nine sign on Cedar Hill Avenue from July 29th to August 8th for their... It's some sort of sale. Sizzling summer sale at the Commons. Um, and that's all I have under the agenda items. I just have a quick report. Uh, the advertisement seeking competitive proposals for the grant writing services uh, was in the Ridgewood News last Friday. Uh, three packets have already been, oh, sorry, four packets have already been re uh, requested. Uh, there's a, those proposals will be received back uh, until Thursday the 28th at 11 o'clock. Bid specifications are currently being uh, composed for the renewal of our curbside collection of solid waste. 
Uh, the only changes that I believe uh, that I'm uh, planning to propose to the council at this or to the committee at this time is to remove certain items from the regular collection um, and schedule pick up schedule a pickup of these items uh, specifically bulk items uh, interior and exterior furniture beds and mattresses and box springs couches carpets scrap wood of not of not to exceed four feet in length uh, boxes of clothing and shoes and uh, shoes and garments decorations uh, large decorations uh, tables desks cabinets benches vanities uh, those items uh, would be we would change it up so that the resident would need to call and schedule a pickup like they do now for um, appliances and metal bulk waste and they would be picked up on a certain day on a special truck and the reason for that is trying to cut down on the disposal fees uh, we get a lesser rate for debris as long as it's not mixed in with the normal municipal solid waste if it's mixed in with the municipal solid waste we pay a higher fee a higher tipping fee okay but the I, I believe our DPW employees do the white goods now on Wednesdays correct mm -hmm. They so would not, the, they the would refuse not be company would be picking up all these other items you just mentioned. Correct. Okay. It would st still be picked up by our refuse company. Got it. it would just be on a separate day. So okay. that a standard truck, when they're driving down the street, they're not picking up black bags. They're Got only it. picking up bulky items as, as defined in, in the municipal okay. solid waste law. Uh, just a, an FYI, mm -hmm. this Saturday is hazardous collection of solid waste in Mawa at Camp Gore Mountain, 9 to 3. The third quarter property taxes are due August 1st. Uh, and just a reminder, those residents who are having issues paying their utilities, please visit the township's website um, for, the, uh, for information from the state of New Jersey on assistance in making those payments. We still have a posting for the assistant tax assessor position up. Um, our right to know physical survey was submitted to the Department of Health last Friday for all our buildings. That's before the July 15th deadline. Our municipal court visitation, as I mentioned at the last meeting, uh, by the vicinage will be on July 25th. DPW and I will be meeting Boswell out on Mountain Avenue this week uh, to review the work that's been recently done to repair the work that was already done uh, and see if it's acceptable and we continue to hold back money um, until we are satisfied with the repairs. Um, I'm recommending to the Township Committee at this point uh, for the 2023 town calendar um, that the subject be the historic buildings of Wyckoff. I uh, believe we have 14 of them, which will cover the 12 months of the year, plus the cover and the back. Um, if anybody has any comments or suggestions, let me know. Uh, if anybody has any items for the upcoming fall edition of the newsletter, we're putting the finishing touches on the articles now and hope to have a draft uh, to the graphic designer uh, next week so that we can get a draft out for review. Um, the fall... Fire, the fireworks extravaganza, again, is scheduled for Saturday the 24th. Planning for that is going uh, smoothly. And the Shred Fest and Styrofoam Recycling for the fall is on Saturday, October 29th. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Township Committee reports. Uh, Pete, we'll start with you. <coughs> all right. Um, I'll be brief tonight. I just want to congratulate the uh, Ramapo High School baseball team again on their great season and championship. Um, the uh, planning board meets tomorrow night, environmental meets next week, and um, I just want to thank the DPW for all their hard work and uh, completing, and they're going ahead completing all their uh, summer projects, and that's all I have tonight. Thank you, Pete. Tom? Yeah, just a couple quick things. Uh, again, congratulations again to the Rampo Baseball Group 3 North Champions. It was nice to have them here. It's not always easy to schedule. Again, by the time they won the championship or ended the end of school year, what kind of school activities? And I'm glad so many of them were able to make it tonight. Um, we continue to uh, have discussions on PBA negotiations. Uh, as Matt mentioned, the paving contract came in. Uh, it actually came in uh, over 30% increase from last year. So I'm glad we're moving aggressively translator when it comes in 30 percent less that means we're going to do less roads and paving so the cost implications that we're all feeling um, these past uh, several 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 months uh, is impacting us here uh, and fireworks uh, we had a meeting this morning uh, the fireworks committee uh, met they continue to meet and discuss various things including uh, Letters to the community, special
special sponsorship. We're grateful to Lakeland and um, ShopRite, other promotions, food trucks. Maybe Tim might have a little more on that uh, when he speaks. That's it. Thank you, Tom. Melissa? It's good to be back. You can take a pass. No, I, you haven't heard from me for like a month and a half. You're right. Um, no comment. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Um, no, I just want to say the newspaper um, ordinance came from me. Uh, a bunch of our residents had kind of said something on Facebook, and I agree. The last time it rained, there were newspapers running down the river on my street. Um, so, but I just wanted to kind of expound because I think it's in the cons consent agenda, right? Mm -hmm. So it's calling for if you send a certified letter to the news provider that there could potentially be a fine if they continue to put newspapers on your driveway or anywhere on your property. So that's what the ordinance is going to say, as opposed to just making phone calls and hoping that it stops. Um, and I think that's it. Tim, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I want to congratulate the Ramapo High School baseball team on their achievements and their um, championship. I can only hope that, and I'm still having a hard time saying I now have a freshman at Ramapo because he just graduated eighth grade, <coughs> but he will be trying to hopefully carry on the Ramapo tradition and hopefully he's talented enough to play baseball for them. So he's still playing the U14 for the Wyckoff travel team. And uh, I will give you an update on uh, the rec board met last night. The tr Speaking of the travel baseball teams, they're wrapping up their regular season this week, and uh, they'll start the playoffs next week. So it's coming to an end for the 14-year-olds, that's for sure. But not my 8-year-old. He's got a long way to go. So, and uh, so softball's still going on. They're still going to continue their regular games uh, in through next week, and I don't think their playoffs start till the end of the month. But um, the, the Ramapo, the... Um, uh, rec board met last night. They just approved some field use permits. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing too extraordinary. Uh, and yes, we did meet this morning for the fireworks, and uh, we are in active planning. And with the help of our administrator, uh, we are trying to get the uh, five food trucks approved. Uh, and one of them will be uh, definitely will be uh, ice cream for the kids because they love the ice cream. So we want to make sure we have at least one food truck so that the uh, boys and girls that are there and, and the adults, I love ice cream too. <laughs> so uh, hopefully they have that as well as other food to purchase uh, for that event. And then we're looking forward to having a great event on the 24th of September. And that's all I got. Thanks. Thank you, Tim. I will be brief as well. The um, <clears throat> Library Board, Historic Preservation, and Board of Health have not met since I was last here, um, and meetings will be intermittent during the summer. Um, on the police committee, the junior, junior police academy was the week before last. Um, it was a great success. Um, Tom and I attended the opening ceremonies. Uh, Tom and Tim and I attended the closing ceremonies. Um, I think one of Tim's sons was involved. Yeah, Matthew. And uh, there were 98 participants it was huge yeah. it was huge yeah, it was the biggest one they had yeah so it was really a great effort and I think everyone had a good time uh, the officers seemed enthusiastic the, the, the crew that ran it um, um, but, uh, officer Christopher was the head of the team um, and it was really a great event um, just briefly on the planning board um, and, and we need a little discussion here so that's what I'm gonna ask for um, tomorrow night as an application from T-Mobile um, for another standby generator, this one by the tower on the corner of Cedar Hill and 208. And the reason it's on for um, a completeness tomorrow night and possible public hearing. Um, they're proposing to install a diesel generator, uh, which we asked them not to do at Town Hall here because we didn't want to introduce diesel fuel on site. Um, I think I'm going to talk to the same thing that we don't want to introduce diesel fuel on site at the corner of 208 and Cedar Hill because there is none there now and there's actually a, 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 an environmentally sensitive area right next to that tower. There's a, there's a pretty good wetlands area there. So um, I don't know any thoughts on that. Um, there, there is no, I believe there is no um, 
gas connection to that building now, so that will have to be installed if we're going to have a natural gas generator. Any thoughts? Any advice? Well, Anybody agree, agree with me? Or? I would agree with you environmentally. Once you get a noise factor with diesel. Yeah, That's di true. Diesel engines are a lot noisier yeah. than natural gas. Okay. That was it. <coughs> I did. Do you want to report on that? Well, um, yes. Um, design review last night um, uh, looked at the proposed second floor, which um, is being proposed for the Tracy Eyewear uh, Center on the corner of Franklin and Wyckoff. And um, there was a lot of discussion, and the meeting um, was inconclusive. Um, they're going to look at it again. The architect is going to look at it again. There was an architect there from Historic Preservation who had other ideas that, I, that are probably worth <coughs> listening to, um, and uh, they're going to come back in two weeks. So um, the applicant will be back on the 21st um, anyway for another building he's looking to do work on. So they're going to revisit the Tracy Eyewear Center on the 21st. Do you so know the wall at Zabriskie House, too? Hmm? The wall at the Zabriskie House? Thank you. Everyone take a look at the wall at the Zabriskie House. Boris Landscaping did a nice fantastic job. job. It looks great. Yeah. It was minimally disruptive, too. Very, so very minimally. Had very little cost to was, the... It came out great. Yeah, yeah. And okay. welcome back, by the way. Thank you. Um, so... Um, I guess that's it. Yeah, and Mayor, I did forget to report on the uh, police academy. And, uh, yeah, that's I, right. Just I forgot. You know, I did attend that because my eighth grader, Matthew, attended that, and he had a great great education in, into what happens, uh, what the police officers go through. So I want to thank the police officers who ran, especially Officer Christopher, uh, because 98 is a lot of sixth, seventh, and eighth graders to uh, handle. And they didn't turn anyone down. They didn't say, no, there's a cutoff of 70. They just said, we can handle this. So they did it, and they did a great job. So I want to thank our police department for it and our police chief for allowing them to do it because these boys and girls had a great time, and they learned a lot. So thank you. Thank you. Um, anything else? I don't know if we have time to um, want to try it. Yeah, we'll, okay. We'll, we'll All right. Ahead. Then we'll take a motion to um, recess. We're going to recess, and we need a we need a motion. We need motion 13. thirteen. Yep. So Nancy. Moved. Second. Mr. Madigan. Yes. Mr. Melchione. Yes. Ms. Rubenstein. Yes. Mr. Shanley. Yes. And Mayor Bunchto. Yes. Now that was a motion to approve uh, a seat twenty-two closed session. Now we need a. Motion to uh, go into closed session. So moved. Second. That's the it's same. The same. It it number 13 did fold. Yeah. Okay. It's already done. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll, if, if you'll excuse us, we'll be back in 15 minutes.